Good afternoon, distinguished Wizards fans. This is the Bullets to Wizards podcast. I'm your host, Sully Hawk, and let's just let the cat out of the bag right now. It's the big news we all woke up to this morning. At around 8 a.m., we got tweets from Woj, Shams, Bleach Report, ESPN, all the big outlets. Coach Wes Unsell Jr. of the Washington Wizards has been fired. Well, not really, kind of. Some people are saying it's a promotion. Some people are just saying he's sticking around because of nepotism. It's kind of hard to tell what his new advisory role is. If if the the team is just keeping him around just because they don't want to have dead money to a fired coach, or whether they want to keep him around for because of his last name, or whether they actually view him as a good front office mind, it's kind of hard to tell at this point. But he, nonetheless, the important thing is. What the majority of the fan base has wanted, what any, any expert analysis c- can tell, Coach West, his lack of adjustments, at times his lack of seemingly, his, his ability to command the team's respect was struggled a lot at times, and it was evident in the last few seasons he needed to go, and especially after the season start, um, starting, you know, 7-36, se- and 36, like... It, 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 it's been long. I think this this podcast is very new, but every episode we've been calling for Coach Wes to um, hit the bag. So um, let's cue that intro music, and then we'll do some more celebratory conversations. All right, yeah, so... Wes, once again, Wes Unsell Jr., relieved of his coaching duties, moving into a front office role with the Wizards. Does Michael Winger, Will Dawkins, Ted Leonsis, I guess they respect his front office mind? And look, here, I just want to start off here. No shade to Coach Wes as a person. Like, from what I've seen, good guy in the community. Um, his father's connections may have helped him get into the NBA and the Wizards organization, but... If you look at his history, I mean, he was an assistant coach in multiple places. Assistant coach in D.C. for a while, um, Orlando, Denver. So he paid his dues still, even with a little even with a little bit of help from his last name. And from interviews, he seems like a good guy. He does seem like a good basketball mind. Like, from Denver, all the Nuggets players had nothing but good things to say about him. And I don't doubt that he knows the game of basketball. It's just, I don't know if, he, if he's cut out to coach the game of basketball at the NBA level. And... That's fine. Either he's meant to be a assistant coach or maybe a good front office mind, but um yeah, definitely uh, the West Unsell tenure. What a, what a roller coaster. I remember when he first got hired a few years ago, um back in, after Scott Brooks got fired in 20 for the 2021-22 season. Um yeah, there was a lot of hope cuz everyone was touting Wes as his defensive genius and then that off season is the off season where and that was the off season that Westbrook got moved and we got Kuzma and KCP and all that and then we signed Spencer Dinwiddie as, as funny as that is and we still had like Rui was still on this team we had a rookie Corey Kispert um Kristaps had arrived recently so or he arrived that season yeah so this season had a lot of interesting movement and this and if you remember that that team also got off to a really hot start. They were like the the one seed in the East. They got off to like a ten and three, ten and two start or whatever. And they were the one seed in the East for like the first month of the season. Everyone was like, "All right, Coach West, well, it's a good hire." And in hindsight, that start was more of a fluke, beginning to the season for them. And things quickly fell off the rails. Um, Contavious Caldwell Pope and Montrez Harrell punched each other, the team went on losing streaks, blown leads, um, yeah, and then it ended up in a 35-win season, so definitely a fall from grace in the first year, but still, it was, there's definitely crack showing in Coach West's ability, even by the end of his first season, but it was like, we gotta give him more than one year, so the second year rolls around, we get off to another decent start, um, Chris Dobbs is more acclimated, and then we have the whole... Beal, Kristaps, Kuzma is what the team is really leaning on, especially after um, moving moving KCP for um, getting Monte Morris and all that. So there was still hope in Coach West's second season, and then Beal for a lot of Coach West's tenure, Bradley Beal was hurt, and then Kristaps 
was more available than in previous moments in his career, but still he missed a fair amount of games. So it really was Kyle Kuzma was the one player that wasn't hurt all the time for them. And I don't know, I mean, evaluating it, a lot of, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of people who aren't close to the Wizards organization trying to give Coach West credit that, like, oh, he didn't always have the best rosters, which I would disagree with. Like, I feel like his the first season roster was a really, like, chemistry was not there, obviously, but there was, there was a nice balance there of the whole, like, Dinwiddie, Beal, Kuzma, uh, Montrez Harrell, and then the combination of Abdia, Kispert, Hachimura coming in and out, and... I feel like these were at the very least like teams that could have been a six seven seed in the East, and he just didn't, didn't even reach the playoffs. Not even a play in result for any of the years. So I don't know. It's just like as, as I said once again, I just don't think he's the best. I guess leader of men also, which is I'm not saying we need a hard nose as our coach. Like we don't need to go back to like the Randy Whitman era. I don't think that really is the best coach for the modern NBA, but definitely someone who at least can command the respect a little more. Like, if I'm being honest, especially with, like, evidence, like, players, like, shown arguing on the bench. Like, I remember, um, Denny Avdia, I wasn't sure. That might have been during Scott Bricks. I believe it is during the Coach West tenure that Avdia and Bertans got into it on the bench. And like I mentioned before, KCP and Montrez Harrell got into it, and just... A lot of, and then the whole like Dinwiddie locker room cancer thing. It's just there were a lot of moments that it's just, uh, Coach West, you gotta get the group these guys together, and and now he he's gone, and and yeah, uh, this is a question I've been wondering to myself, but I've been thinking like, was was Wes Unseld a better coach than Scott Brooks, and. I mean, the, the Scott Brooks era also got criticism for a lack of just any kind of play calling or set scheme with the team or, like, identity, really, with how the team played after, especially after after Wall got hurt during the Scott Brooks years, the team really felt like they had no identity in terms of how they played, and all the West Unsolved years, like, free-flowing isolation offense, and then sometimes zone, sometimes just poor man-to-man defense with bad rotations and switching, and it's just... In a weird way, a lot of the things we complained about during Scott Brooks's years in DC are the same things we complained about with Coach West. I don't know if I want to say his years were worse than the Scott Brooks years. Now, to be fair, the Scott Brooks years, we did have that 49 win season, some actual playoff runs. Was the team a little better because they had a superstar John Wall, a good Bradley Beal, and some other pieces during the Scott Brooks years? Maybe, but. Like I said, I, I, I just I just feel like every time, like I said before, every time you may mention that Weston had the best roster, I feel like, like the first, like I, like I just feel like having Kristaps Kuzma, Beal, all all these people, some Ruby, Denny, Corey, Contavious Caldwell, Pope, Gafford, all these. There's been enough pieces here to at least make the play in, and that hasn't been done. Two thirty-five win seasons, a seven-win season, and I think it was funny. Um. On the Wizards press release regarding um, just their, their, their reasoning for taking Coach West out of the coaching role and putting him into the front office, they mentioned his win-loss record, which I can't tell if that's a shot, secret shot at him or if that's just how the PR team thinks is a good way to speak, but they mentioned his 77 and 130 record, and you know what? That's a fireable, that's a fireable record right there. I don't, I don't care who you are, unless you're like Coach Popovich, where you have like a good twenty-year track record of previous success before a rebuild, if you go seventy-seven and one thirty in like, two and a half, three years, then you should be out. I mean, look, I mean, I know the Buck situation is way different than ours with the whole Adrian Griffin getting fired, despite them the Bucks having a really good record this year. But I know a lot of people are saying that Giannis and Dame wanted Adrian Griffin out and. And that's a really weird situation going on there with them hiring Doc Rivers and all that. And I'm glad that the Wizards are going to wait till the offseason for a more thorough coaching search. Like, sure, like, um... So, yeah, um, the Wizards did name Brian Keefe as the interim head coach for the rest of the season, is what they're saying. So, I mean, that's cool. Keefe has been the assistant coach in multiple stops, um, most recently Brooklyn. Um, I was seeing Kevin Durant had positive things to say about uh, um, Brian Keefe on the Nets coaching staff. I guess he, I guess he liked Keefe more than Jock Vaughn. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I mean, I don't. There's in a dream world. Will could will Brian Keith 
rally this 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 group of ragtag young players and make them respectable, and then he wins the full time job. In reality, probably not. But if he can just turn out some more respectable um, results, um, I saw on Twitter even uh, Will Dawkins said that on uh, moving for- forward under Brian Keith, he said, "quote This is um I saw this on Twitter from from Chase Hughes. Um, he tweeted uh, this quote that." I think you'll see more of a defensive mindset. That's these are these are Will Dawkins' words. That so, and that's funny. So once again, like everyone that criticizing Coach West for just lack of defensive strategy and coaching them up, and immediately as soon as he's fired, Will Dawkins, the GM, is like, "Oh yeah, the new interim coach, the coach that was an assistant that we brought in this year. Yeah, he's going to do a better job coaching the defense for these young guys." And that's uh, that's firing to me. I mean, I hope so. I mean, like this team has a lot of flaws, like the lack of. Sp- true like like a d- defensive anchor i'm sorry gafford you're not a defensive anchor and just i mean like there's pieces there that to make a somewhat middle of the pack defense like avdia has shown he has the ability to be an okay defender balal is showing a lot of good raw instincts on defense um there's stuff kuzma at times if when he tries can be good on defense obviously there's, there's holes on d like jordan Poole. um cory kispert when he comes in isn't the best defender even Marvin Bagley, as much as he hustles, will get out muscled. <laughs> as much as he hustles, he will get out muscled. But hey, we love the Bagley trade so far, so I'm not going to critique on that. But um, yeah, so I mean, uh, well, I'm expecting decent things from Brian Keith. Um, it, it was a quick turnaround naming the new coach, especially because tonight the Wizards are playing the Jazz. And in fact, by the time this episode is uploaded, um, the Wizards will probably be in the Jazz game right now. Apologies for not uploading this episode earlier. Trust me, I was I was, I was reading all the headlines in the middle of class, um, and I was like, oh, I, I gotta make an episode for the podcast. But so as soon as I got back to my um, dorm room, hit record. Here we are. Um, the Wizards Jazz game is starting really soon. But hey, I mean that's cool. We don't have to wait um, to see what Brian Keefe and if there's any culture change, identity change. I don't imagine this team will look drastically different in one night, considering it's been 20, 24 hours, less than 24 hours since the last game. And I mean, Keefe, just for the sake of continuity, is not going to implement a whole new like team identity overnight. And I think it'll happen gradually over the season, especially after the trade deadline when like maybe Tyus Jones and some veterans get moved. I think you'll definitely then see a change in how this team plays, but at least for now, it's probably going to be a similar team, especially because Keith was working with Coach Wes um, over the, this, this season, and I don't know, another interesting point I've seen brought up in Wizards circles and just Wizards gossip, I guess, is that, was is Brian Keith secretly handpicked by, like, Dawkins and Winger to be, like, this whole time they're like, yeah, we're going to fire Coach Wes in the middle of the season or something, like, just because he is one of the few, like, new assistant coaches that were brought in after Dawkins and Winger came in, and, and it is interesting that, Co- that Wes Unsell did stay after the new GM and president were brought in, just because usually when a, a owner fires the GM and president of the team, they usually also fire the coach, just for a whole new clean slate of the regime, but no, it's like, the coach from the old regime, and then a brand new general manager and president is like, it was kind of confusing, but I guess they didn't last long, so... I still think in the off season that yeah, like I said before, they're gonna. Who will it be? We'll have to see what the coaching free agent pool is by then. But um, definitely in a future episode, maybe definitely way later on the season. Maybe once once this team is settled into an inevitable fifteen win end or something like, then we could be, we'll definitely do an episode of coaching candidates once it becomes clear who's available in the off season. But for now, we'll write out the bri- we'll write out the Brian Keefe half-season era we're about to live through. Um, gotta love being a tanking team. I mean, that's what we asked for for a while. We asked for Coach West being fired off for, 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 for ever since his first season. We've been asking for him to get fired, and um, we're, we're slowly getting what we wanted. And I appreciate this team, instead of waiting forever to get moves done, like, they're being more proactive, which I, I, I do appreciate. Like, once again, not to keep bringing up Wes's negatives, but I mean... We had that 35-point blown lead to the Clippers. We had um, back-to-back 20-point blown leads, if you remember. I think last, yeah, last season, the first team in NBA history to blow back-to-back 20-point leads and lose in back-to-back games. And it's just and it's, and that's an especially evident. Like, this team often comes out flat in the second half, statistically, and just by the eye test. And then also, yeah, all the blown leads this team goes through. Even this season, remember? Um, that 16-point fourth-quarter blown Raptors lead... They're, 
and it's just it's it's evident that coach coach west former coach west i can't keep calling him coach but former coach west coach west on so junior um he gets out coached by most coaches in the league like if you look at any coaching rankings he's either like ranked 29th or 30th and yeah i mean i wish him the best if he becomes some kind of front office assistant in the future that's great but if he's also disappears and becomes an assistant coach in the future for another team i think that's perfectly fine for him like i said decent enough guy but this team is moving forward slowly but surely. Everything from the, the the whole mediocrity, the whole that whole stench of just doing everything we can to be the eighth seed. That whole stench is leaving the team. We're finally getting a. This, the whole point of this rebuild is that by the end of it, in three four years, we'll be a true like top four team in the East, and it's gonna take patience. But steps like getting rid of a middling coach is a good step. So um, yeah um. Speaking of the new era, I mean, might as well let's look, look at the to tour tonight. Um, quick preview of the Jazz games as, as it's happening right now. So yeah, the Utah Jazz are currently 22 and 23. Um, currently the 10 seed in the West, so just hanging on to a play-in spot. Kind of in a similar position to last year, but last year they got off to a really good start, and then once they, they traded a lot of their assets away, even more assets away after the trade deadline, that's when they fell out of the play-in picture. But this year, once again... Um, looking like a solid play and contending team um i would definitely say they're playing above the, what you you would you would expect to them um will hardy coach of the jazz now that's a good coach right there i would love a will hardy type in dc next year if you can find someone like him but yeah that that team is coached well um lo like a lot of hustle like obviously you they, they have colin sexton lowry markin and is awesome and um even john collins i don't think has been getting enough credit as a fairly like sneaky like nice p player for the Jazz this year. I mean, he's definitely had his colder moments, especially when the Jazz d have been on. This, the Jazz team has been a bit streaky this year. Like from January here, from January um, six to fifteenth, they went on a six-game win streak, and then from their last three games after that six-game win streak, they've lost three in a row. With especially um, on Tuesday against the Pelicans, they lost one fifty-three to one twenty-four. So. Yeah, but um, I mean, there's a couple of things with, with, with the Jazz's struggles this year. I feel like Walker Kessler hasn't developed as much as the Jazz hoped in his second year. Like after his rookie year, it's like, oh, and maybe in four or five years, Walker Kessler could be a Defensive Player of the Year candidate. Like awesome shot blocking ability and all that can somewhat finish around the rim, but um, that hasn't come to fruition. I mean, he still has time, but. The development of Kessler has been a little disappointing. Kante George has been really nice. Um, if you look at all the rookie ladders, he's starting to um, even surpass Bilal in the, like a lot of the rookie rankings, which I don't like. I still think, as, as a wizard stan, I think all hail Bilal. I think Bilal is still better than Keontae George. But, but Keontae George is having a nice rookie season. And yeah, which is like with the type of young team they are... Um, I mean, they have, like, they have some veterans, like, like I said, like... A, Jordan Clarks and Lowry Marketing that are really nice pieces and will they get moved to the deadline? I don't think I think Lowry's gonna stay around just he's under contract for a bit. Clarkson could get moved, but um yeah, with, with, with the overall amount of young players they have, all the um, the random like Simone Fontecchios and Ocha Abajis and all the Chris Dunn's of the world, all the Let's, let's not even get on how the Wizards should have um, capitalized on having Chris Dunn in our G League system last year, but um, yeah, they're definitely going to be a streaky team, but they're a streaky team that's competitive unlike us, where we're, we're a, a bad team that's just bad, so yeah, I, 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 as much hope as I as much as, as funny as I think it would be, honestly to have the Wizards win their first game in the Brian Keefe era, um, most likely it will be a loss I think we'll continue our trend of just having a bunch, like, good first half, second half again, Pool, Kuzma, the gang might not give full effort, and then it's going to end up being like an eight-point loss or whatever, but I think main thing, main goal I want to see from this game is definitely just be able to contain... The, 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 this is a goal I have for a lot of games. Just be able to contain Olenek, Walker, Kessler... Um, John Collins to contain the bigs, and I kind of I, I heard um, Chris Miller and Drew Gooden suggest this on the broadcast, and I kind of want to see it 
Against teams that are a bit larger in size, I wouldn't mind seeing a Gafford Bagley lineup just for a few minutes. I'm not saying I'm not saying make that the starting lineup immediately, but I think Kuz at the three, Bagley at the four, Gafford at the five, and then let's just say <sighs> it, it becomes a real question. Obviously, I'll, I'll keep Tyus at the one until he gets traded, but then at the two, would you put? That'd be a really big line of having Denny as your two guard, but I kind of want to see it and then pull as a sixth man. Like at this point, we're not getting any good trade value for pull. So if we were to throw pull, make him a sixth man, see if that a bench role, play, him playing against second units can get him. Because last year in Golden State, obviously Golden State's a way better system, Coach Kerr and all that. He had 20 points as primarily a sixth man for Golden State last year, and this year he's averaging 16, 17 points off of, as a starter who. I mean, at times, it felt like the, the team has slowly started to freeze pull out of the offense, but he still gets the ball enough, so... I don't know. I was kind of... Um, a few minutes ago, as of recording, I did I did check Twitter, and I saw the Wizards did post their starting lineup for tonight, and it's the same Tyus, Poole, um, Denny, Kuzma, Gafford lineup. So I'm a bit disappointed in the first game with a new coach. We're not, having, not throwing Bilal or something different in the starting lineup, but... That's fine. Like I said, oh, after one night, I don't expect Brian Keith to change everything up. And um, main thing, I do want to see different lineups just from the bench rotations. Like I said, either a, more below getting run with the starters. Um, like I'm like like I said, I'm happy when Shamit gets run, but like keep Shamit with the second unit. Don't like throw Shamit out there with all the starters and then things fall apart defensively. Like, I, I like the idea of Bilal being a defensive spark plug with the starters. And even, honestly, against last game against the Timberwolves, let's get into the what went wrong with the Timberwolves game last game. Um, I would say it was definitely not one of Bilal's finest showings. Um, he, had, he had moments where he was trying to throw the ball off, I believe, McDaniels. Um, but he tried throwing the ball off and it just bounced off Bilal. And it just, it just, those are just going to be some rookie growing pains. And especially just some of the, he had some bad turnovers. And overall, that's the, in general with the team, in Coach West's former, let's say it again, former Coach West, Ansel Jr., <laughs> Jr.'s last game, um, I mean, once again, the team had a, actually, I think I had a pretty good first half. Like, they had, we had a six point lead at one point. They remained competitive. They saw, I mean, the Timberwolves kind of, they didn't really play Gobert and Cat that much together, honestly, throughout the whole game. They kind of kept them playing at different times, and when they played together in the fourth quarter, that's when they really went on a run against the Wizards. But overall, I think the Wizards did a decent enough job containing Gobert and Cat. Um, I mean, Cat also did have kind of a cold shoot night. After his 62-point performance against coming into D.C., I don't know if it was just shot fatigue. I mean, it's hard to replicate his performance against the Hornets a few days ago against us, but... We, get, we got a little bit lucky that he started 0 for 6 from 3, but overall, first half containing Edwards, Cat, Gobert was fine, but then in the second half, Edwards did whatever he wanted, Cat got more better looks, Gobert was just a force to be reckoned with in the paint, and yeah, it felt like a very winnable game in the first half, and I feel like even though it was definitely not the Timberwolves' best performance, I feel like they played a little flat against us just because they are the one seed in the West, and... We are one of the we're the second worst team record wise right now and yeah it's just turnovers killed us we played like a sloppy team like it, 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 the game was within reach because the Timberwolves didn't play their best game but then we didn't play our best game so it's like what the heck like if we at least put up an effort I honestly think it could have been a game that went down to the wire just because the Timberwolves were still reeling after losing to the Hornets and I feel like we had an opportunity to get a weird win against the one seed in the West but. It is what it is. This team, some of the vets are just not going to... A lot of the vets that know, that know they're going to be gone this season or next season are just a little bit checked out, and it is what it is. But uh, th that lack of effort may be something Brian Keefe can bring in. We'll see. But like the Timberwolves game, first half a little bit excited, but overall it's been, it was a lot of the same script that we've been seeing throughout, throughout the season. And I mean, okay, I'll give one positive... Gotta give props to Denny Avdia for um, this season overall. Definitely, the first few years of Denny's career, one of the most frustrating things with him has been his poor shooting, and it's, I would, it's I would, something that everyone has wanted him to improve on. And this season, he's shooting uh, like around thirty-five percent from three, which is much better than like the twenties and thirty percent three-point shooting he's had for a majority of his career. 
and last night he was on fire from three. Um, in total, he had 24 points, six rebounds, and six assists. And that's honestly the main development I've seen from Danny this year that has made me happy. Like, yeah, I'm happy to see him shoot a little better from three, but honestly, it's the playmaking. Because I remember when he got drafted, okay, I think the Luka Doncic comparisons are really dumb with Denny. Like, they are not the same player. Denny is not... There was hope Denny could be a point forward when he got drafted, but I don't know if it's because of how he was coached by Brooks and Wes Unseld, but he's just not that. But he, he'll he never be Draymond, or I've never seen that comparison. He'll Even to that level of playmaking, he'll never be that. But if you can get games where he has like at least like if you can get a nice little five, six assists per game average consistently, keep on getting those, because this, God knows, this team needs rebounding, so if you can be a good, like, just fill up this, be a stat sheet stuffer, like, get a consistent, like, 10 to 15 points every night, get us five rebounds, five assists, and Denny will be an awesome little piece, like, it's okay, like I said, with a lot of these young players, it's okay if you're not gonna end up being even an all-star, but if you can be a really, really solid contributor, either... Like, Denny's on a really good contract right now, so that makes me a little more patient with him, but it's just, it, if you can just be, like, know your role and do your role really well, like, I wouldn't mind, like, obviously I want Bilal to be a superstar, but then some of these other players who, the verdict may be out on them that Denny's not going to be a superstar, that's fine. He can still be a really good contributing piece, like, on a playoff team, if he's, if he's your fifth or sixth best player on a playoff team, that's perfectly okay, and I don't know, I mean... I'm 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 pleased overall with Denny's development for, especially where especially where his career looked a, a year or two ago, and I know this team put a lot of faith in him, especially after trading Ruby and all that, and he he's not going he's not going turbo mode Denny every night, but I just had to give him props. He's one of the few players from last night I had to give him props. I mean Kuzma had 17 points, 14 rebounds, but and it was another game where the, the the last few weeks for Kuzma have been kind of weird, like just inefficient poor shooting, I don't know, I mean, a lot of the rumors also are that Kuzma, the Wizards have a very high asking price for Kuzma, and teams are calling about Kuzma naturally, but the Wizards are not budging on their asking price, which is probably at least two first round picks and some good young players, so it might not be till another year that Kuzma gets moved, which is fine, I guess we just have to deal with a whole year of Kuzma not giving full effort. I mean, still technically averaging 21 points, I don't know, 21.8, 21.7 points per game, but like I said, the last few weeks have been disappointing from Kuzma, but I don't know. It is what it is with him at this point. Supposed to be a team leader. I don't know. Maybe he'll turn it on randomly in a few... <laughs> There'll probably be some moment in the next two weeks where he randomly will drop 35 and be like, all hail our team leader, but for the most part, there's stuff to left to be desired there. And then another nice game from Marvin Bagley. Um... I guess he's one other player I want to give props to. Um, he had 17 points, 15 rebounds, shot a really efficient 7 for 8. That's something, I think that's something Bagley has developed through his, throughout his career. When he first came into the league, um, obviously a young player looking for his looks and all that. And as, as his career has progressed, he's kind of shot less three-pointers per game. Like have, He's not really... Like, he can be a stretch big. He's definitely more of a stretch big than Gafford, but he does not. he's still not really looking to shoot threes. But he provides floor spacing, that's enough. But I appreciate that he's not taking any dumb shots. Like, he went 7 for 8 because he was taking smart shots by the rim. A lot of um, offensive rebounds and just good positioning. Even against it, like intimidating defenders like Gobert, Nas Reed, Carl Anthony Towns. Like, he was taking smart shots, and I appreciate that from Bagley. And, and I, honestly, he's traditionally been a de fine free throw shooter. I don't know what's happened since the trade. He's been really, really bad. His first game, he had like that 0 for 6 from the free throw line, and then this game, he missed a lot of free throws. He could have had his, like, his third 20 and 10 game with the Wizards if he just could have knocked down some free throws, so that was a little bit funky, but overall, like I said, still really happy with Bagley, and I mean, beyond that, Kispert, I know Raj is in here, um, yeah, uh, but uh, my co-host, Raj, is not here. I know he won't be happy with me saying this, but it was another disappointing game from Corey Kispert. So, yeah, and then it's just on the bench pool. Horrendous game. Um, like I said, not 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 Bilal's best showing. Gafford had gone to foul trouble. And it, it, w it was nice to see at least when Gafford got into foul trouble, this team didn't immediately fall apart. Like, in the past, if you had to put Muscala in, this team would have fallen apart defensively with Bagley at least 
this around the same level of eh, defense was maintained, so that was nice. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess there's positive. There, 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 I would say there's one or two more positives from that game, West Unsell's last game, that could carry over with some better coaching. Like I, I think, yeah, that game, the last game, was a result of bad coaching. I don't think necessarily the Timberwolves' loss was anything in particular is a reason why Wes Unseld got fired, but, um, yeah, it's just, it was another game of evident bad coaching with that second half performance, and hey, now we got a new coach, and all the best of luck to Brian Keefe tonight with the, and the, for the Wizards and the, against the Jazz, hoping, for, I know it's gonna, there's no game I'm confident we will win against, even after, especially if that Pistons lost, there's, there's no game I'm confident that we'll win, but, at least let's keep on seeing good um some new lineups. That's the main thing I want to see tonight. Um, productivity, a bounce back game from below. I want to see Denny continue his good shooting. I want to see Kuzma just be efficient. Pull, just show me any signs of life. But um, yeah, we'll see. And like I said, best of luck to the, for, the, for the half season of Brian Kiefer about to get. And yeah, like I appreciate this team being a little patient with the coaching search. Like, there'll definitely be a lot more prosperous um, coaching availability in the offseason. Like, last year, like, the Hawks tried the midseason edition of Quinn Snyder. I, I really like Quinn Snyder as a coach, but it just has not worked out in Atlanta for whatever reason. And then um, this season, I mean, now the Bucks hiring Doc Rivers in the middle of the year. We'll see how that goes. I mean, really weird coach situation over coaching situation over there in Milwaukee, but... Yeah, like, I appreciate we didn't just randomly hire, like, let's say, who's available right now? Let's, Mark Jackson making him come leave, come out of his temporary coaching leave and making him coach the Wizards or, like, a Terry Stotts or something weird like that. Like, I appreciate we're, we're going to wait, either hire maybe some really good assistant coach from a competitive team, a team with that goes on to maybe one of the teams that makes the conference finals or the finals this year we can poach an assistant coach from them i don't see this team going the college coach route um and i see i with, with this newer gym i don't even see them going with the like this, there, there, there aren't any coaches on the hot seat right now from other teams that could be let go that i would want necessarily like i know jason kidd on the Mavs is on the hot seat but i do not want jason kidd as our coach both ethically him as a person but then also just all the Mavs issues they had like they had a really devastating loss to the suns last night it's just yeah there's not any coaches that could become available that are currently coaching that one so i'd appreciate that the wizards will take their time and really see what some of the more fresher younger names in the coaching market could be so yeah um this is another small chapter in what's hopefully more good moves in the Dawkins winger era, but yeah. So yeah, thank you guys again for celebrating with me the end of the West Unsolved Junior era. It's a long rebuild, but we're gonna we're gonna make it through. Um, yeah. So next episode will will be probably this weekend Jazz game recap, um, and then my co-host Raj may or may not be back. Um, when Raj does get back, we'll hundred percent do a, tr a trade deadline preview special um i guess i just four or five mock trades that we really like that we've seen that are popular or even ones that are a bit more under the radar that we've created but um yeah so thank you just thank you for joining me once again um this has been the bullets to wizards podcast i'm your host sully and it's tough times but bright future and let's all keep on shooting those dc3s together all right love y'all stay fresh